Hello, I'm Crafty Patty and thanks for tuning in. I do get requests from my viewers on ideas on what to make for another video. So here you go. I had a viewer ask me, could I make a curvy basket? Is how she called it, a curvy basket. So this is what I've done. I'm now showing you how to bring a basket from a small base, getting wider and coming up to a narrower top and you've attached a lid. Now this I would call maybe an intermediate, maybe too advanced if you've never done rope bowls before. So I would suggest starting out with my first tutorial on how to make rope bowls. Start with something like this first and then advance up to something like this. So there's a little tiny bit more holding techniques but it's doable. You will get there and you will be able to make this with a bit of practice. So, I mean, you can make lots of different shapes of lids, like this one here, I've made it a little bit flatter and then domed to the middle. And this one here comes up a little bit higher, more like a, a B5 look. So lots of options, lots of ways to make your lids and lots of different forms you can make in different shapes for your baskets. So continue watching and I'm going to show you how I created this basket. And today I'm going to be using my manual Husqvarna machine in a jeans needle, size 90 for 14 and Guterman 100% polyester thread. And I'm going to show you the cord I'm using. Now I find this quite interesting. These are both 100 feet. They are both cotton sash cord. They have both got the synthetic core and both 100 feet, quarter inch. They're both the same. But look how much bigger this one is than this one. So even though they look similar in width, by the time it's all wrapped up, this one is so much bigger. And I'm finding when I make the bowls from this one, it's a much stiffer bowl as well. So I'm going to be using the Buffalo cotton sash cord today. And the same as all my other rope bowls, I always unwind this because if you don't, it tends to tangle while you're sewing and that's just frustrating. So I will unwind this and then I'll roll it back up into a ball and then we're ready to start. And we'll be sitting that on the floor so I can easily draw from it. Now in a lot of my rope bowl videos, I have showed putting a piece of tape on the end of this to contain all those loose ravelly ends. Now some people have commented saying, well I don't really want tape on the end because you might be able to see it. Well you cut most of it off. But if you really don't want the tape, you just have to cut this so it's really, really clean and there's no ravels and you get most of this cleaned up so it's really clean. And once it's clean, if you can get a really nice wrap by forcing this all in and all those loose ends into a nice tight circle, then by all means, don't use your tape. It just takes a little bit of effort to get this wrapped around. And I find by sitting it on a table, that's much easier because you can keep it nice and flat and get your rounds made. Once you've done about four rounds, I'm going to come in with my pins like I always do, one on each side just to hold my little circle together here. Now what I'm going to do is, because I did not use the tape, I'm just going to flick this up and get rid of any loose ends here. And the rest I'll be able to sew in. And the same on this side. Just flick up any loose ends. 
Okay, so again, like all my other baskets, I'm going to sew with a straight stitch straight through this way and straight through this way. To get started, what I like to do is, you can see that my presser foot is sitting further down and higher up because the rope is higher. I lift up my presser foot, I bring it into the middle more. I'm just going to turn so I don't hit my pin. And then I start sewing here and then I back stitch and then I come back again. So that's what we're going to do. Now because I have chosen not to use the tape, I'm going to come back and forth in the middle here and just make sure that all those little gravelly ends are not flying all over the place. In fact, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to choose to then go into my zigzag. So I'm just going to change and come into my zigzag and then I'm going to back it up. And we'll just contain all those little loose ends right in the middle here and back again. There we go. And I'm just going to go back to my straight stitch. Follow through to the end here and lock it in. come through this way now I'm coming through this way again let that come up past to the second rope so it grabs and then go back so we're going to back stitch to the end and forward Once you've got this first section, it's much easier to now go around and do our rounds. That's why I like to do that. So we'll just take out these pins now. Now because we did a little bit of zigzagging on these first two rows in here, we're okay to leave that part alone. I'm going to come now and I'm going to start sewing this round to this round here. So we're going to go in there. And the rope is always coming off the right side. You're forming your basket to the left. We are now going to go onto our zigzag stitch and I'm at the furthest I can go from my setting, which is 5.5 for the longest width. But for my length, I'm going to not make it as long as normal. I'm going to come down to about a two. So it'll be quite short little zigzags because then it's easier to get around your circle just for the first part. All right, so here we go. And this part will be going a little bit slower. Just get that locked in. And then what I'm doing is I'm watching the break in my presser foot. And that tells me that I can try to match up the middle between my two ropes. At this point in time, I'm just gonna lift up my foot and move it around and continue sewing in the circle here trying to catch both sides moving it around Once I know these first few rounds are secure, then what I'm going to do is lift up my presser foot. I'm going to let this roll around again. 
just because we don't need all of that in the way. I've got one more round to do and then we'll unwind this again. And the reason I have to do this is because we've sewn through with the straight stitch and that has grabbed that one row and that's why I'm letting this one wrap around like this until we're done and we're past that where we sewed with the straight stitch. Needle down, press the foot up and around we go. And now we've got it where our two ropes are together and so now I'll be constantly having this rope coming through to the front now. Now, we did a really tight sew in the beginning here. I'm going to now increase my length and I'm going to move that up to four. My width is still at 5.5. Okay, so carry around now and we're going to continue around till we have the base the size that we wanted. I'm watching that this is right in the middle of where my brake is and my presser foot. I'm guiding my rope between my thumb and my finger. This is, I'm not pulling on the rope right now, but I'm just guiding a little bit with my finger here. And you'll watch my fingers on the left, how I'm moving this around as I'm sewing. You'll notice that I've got the boards here, or if you have a machine that you've got an extended bed, even better. This board with the base coming up over it will help to keep this nice and flat and not dull. You want this always to be flat. So carry on. My base is now about six and a half inches or 16.5 centimeters. And now I'm going to start to bring up my sides. I'll be bringing up my sides gradually, probably about here, and then I'll have a nice gradual bend like so. Now your machine is gonna dictate how far you need to come out to come in again. Because when you come in, that top part the circumference of when you're coming in, that top part like this, can't be any smaller than the height of your machine. So my center has to be able to go about seven and a half inches. That's my height. So I can go out as far as I want to, but I can only come in to seven and a half inches because that's my height that I want to be able to get that over the head of my machine. So I can keep track of my rounds. I'm just going to slip a pin in here. That will tell me where my starting point is. For my first round, I'm going to lift it just slightly. I'm going to go around once. So I'm just going to show you just by lifting that little bit. Can you see how that has forced that one round up just slightly. So just lifting that much will make that much difference. So I'm gonna go around one more time just with my three fingers here. Back to my start. Now, instead of having my three fingers flat, I'm gonna turn them like this, and then I'm going to sew around. Again, you can see the, the gradual lift here. That's how much is starting to come in. Again, one more round with my three fingers underneath. And now I'm going for four fingers underneath. Now I've got my whole hand. And instead of 
on the edge here, I'm going to slide my hand further in to raise it some more. And you can see the nice gradual curve we're getting here. So I'm going to continue in that manner every time, moving a bit more, moving a bit more, moving a bit more until I'm all the way up to the top here. Once you've got the height that you want here, then that's when we're coming up right against the head of our sewing machine. And now these rounds here will be coming just straight up and then we're going to start to curve it in. So a few rounds of just all the way up and then I will show you how we start to curve it in. Um, but I just wanted to show you right now I'm holding it up in here to keep it so it's always parallel straight up and down so I'm holding it here while I'm sewing. Once you've done a few rows it's sometimes it's easier to take it out of the sewing machine and I've just been working on now making this a little bit straighter and now we can start coming in. So now we're going to start to angle it in and make it smaller in the top here now. Now to help it come in again I'm going to be letting it flop right over the top of the machine and with my hands and my fingers here I'm going to be lifting it just slightly up off the bottom like this. I don't know if you can see that action. I'm just lifting it up like so. And I'll put a little tiny bit more tension on the rope so it starts to help suck it in to a smaller circumference on the top. Again, letting this fall over lifting and a slight tension on the rope. Away we go. Now when you get to this stage before you're doing your last rounds to bring it in even smaller, go around and pull on your cords and make sure you have not missed any because this type of uh, basket making is a little bit more difficult the way you have to bring it over. So if you've got anything like that, just bring it back in, reinforce it, backstitch, fix it and backstitch and then keep fixing all your areas if you've got any. So I'm going to continue to go around until this is hitting against here and I'll see how far I can get. This is why I originally told you when you're making your basket, make sure that this can come over your machine so you can get it to come in. Otherwise, this type of basket is very difficult to make any other way. This is the easiest way to do it. So you'll see here, if I try to come up this way, I'm gonna get it coming to be a straight side again. That would be cool. That would be another cool uh, design as well. But for my design, I want it to keep coming in. So this is just about as far as I can go. You can see where it's hitting on the top almost. I can maybe get a couple more rounds in there and then I will stop. because this is going to be used to finish off our lid that's going to get attached to here. So we'll leave this alone. This, by the way, took 100 feet. That was that whole um, skein or hank, whatever you want to call it, of rope. So I'm going to grab my second hank of rope and we're going to start our lid with this. Now it's time to decide what shape do you want for your lid? This one, I've got it quite high and I've made it kind of like a, a beehive shape. These lids, we're gonna start, we'll be starting at 
the center will work out and then when I get to about three or four rows from my finish that's where I'm going to add on the rope we left over from our our basket down here and then we are going to join the rope together that will be how we're going to do the join here for this one you can see that I've made it almost flat here and then I've domed it up just for a different effect on this one so you have to decide how you want your lid to look don't or you can do, do a totally flat lid like flat across it's all what you like and again we're going to start our center of our lid exactly the same way as the other one you can choose to put the tape on here and then cut most of it off so you've only got a little tiny bit of tape showing or if you don't want the tape then just clean it up as best you can and then really squeeze all of those raw little ends into that circle you want that nice and tight to contain all of those raw little pieces of cotton rope that are flinging all over the place so just get it started keep it on the table push that down Wrap approximately four rounds, put your pins in just like before. And I'm going to come in and again, like I did before, just flick this up and cut off any excess little stray pieces of cotton rope. And this is a great time to uh, put in another bobbin. As you see, I'm almost out. And as a reminder, I'm going to bring this up to my second round of rope so it catches nicely, so I can secure this area and then backstitch and come forward. And now I'm going to come through the other way again, bringing it up to the second row. Cut off all my little ends here. And remove my pins. And the same as before, we've secured this with a zigzag in here. So I'm going to now sew these two rounds together here, always having your rope off the right side, the bowl forming to the left. So let's go in and exactly the same as before, lining up my cut in the presser foot with the two joins of rope and it's on my 5.5 my widest but to get around these little tiny circles i bring it down to about a two and a half very very small in in um, length for your zigzag
and you can choose to just lift it up, unwind some of that rope, finish up your last round where you've sewed it with the straight stitch, and then we'll be ready to go. Needle down, press her foot up, let that roll around, and now we're ready to go, where the cord will always be coming straight down. This is when I'm going to increase my width, or sorry, my width will be the same at 5.5, but I'm going to increase my depth of my zigzag, and I'm going to come up to 4. And now I'm going to just start lifting slightly already, because I want that to be a little bit of a dome, so I'm just going to put my finger under here, and we're going to start to lift already. And I'm wanting my lid to have a little gradual slope, so I'm going to hold it at that same position throughout the whole lid. So I'm going to stop there because I need to add this rope to this to join it together. So right now I'm sitting at about six and a half inches or 16.5 centimeters. And this one for my measurement on top is about eight and a half or about 21 centimeters. So we're going to take this off now and we have to do a little bit of a calculation with our rope and then we'll cut the ropes, join them and we'll finish our lid. So we'll just secure my last part here. Now we're ready to figure out how much rope we need to make the finished part of our lid to fit our basket. I'm going to cut this off but I'm going to leave a bit of length here because I want to be able to make it easy for me to join these two. So we'll cut it off there. That's all we need for that rope. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a rough measurement here. So I'm just going to go around. This is going to be approximately the join. Just pinning it here and there. And this is going to allow me to figure out how much rope I need to cut off. So I've done about one, two, three rounds there, starting on my fourth round up here. So I'm just placing it up on my basket here and I'm seeing how much more I have to go. So by the looks of it, I need to go around two more rounds because I want this to overlap onto this one here. So I'm thinking two more rounds should do it. So I'll just loosely wrap this around here. That's one. And there's two. Now, this is how much I've got left over. Now, I could either make this lid come over just a little bit more. So that's what I want you to do is just kind of get your rough estimate on how much rope you need. If you found that this was too much, then from here to here, I would know that I have to cut off this much at the beginning of my rope. So then I would cut off that much, but I'm going to leave it. So now I know I've got enough rope to finish my project. So I'll just take all this out now, all the pins. Now, if say you left not as much as I left, then you have to just make sure that when you're doing your lid that you don't cut it off until you know you've got enough to join them and to make a lid big enough to fit your basket. So I did cut it off because I was pretty confident that I had enough. But if you're not sure, then leave that attached to your end. You can always have this longer if needed. All right. Now it's time to take this to the machine and we're going to attach this to this and we're going to sew it together. 
I'm going to sew this up a little bit closer till I'm about this far away from the rope and then I'm going to stop. Wanting to make sure I keep the same angle that I had before on my basket and I just about caught myself because I was lifting it up because I'm used to doing other baskets. I want to keep it at that same level. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt these up together, but I'm going to make sure it bows out just that little bit. So when it comes back in, it's going to be a really nice tight join. Because I'm not using the tape method, um, it's a little bit more difficult because this rope really does fray a lot. That's why you've got to have a really close attachment. So I'm going to put a pin right here. So it stays in that position. And you can see where it's bowed out. And I'm going to get this to all come in together. And when I push it together, we're going to make sure all of this is nicely neat and tidy and it's pushed in so you can't see where the join is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to push all these little tiny pieces of cotton rope into each other. And this is where your stiletto comes in handy because this is where I'm going to be coming in and really making sure I've got all this nicely pushed in as best I can. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit closer here, holding the angle of the basket the same as before, not up, but the same angle, and joining the rope at the same time. Now, I'm going to actually bring this down so I'm not on my four for my length again. I'm going to keep my width the same at 5.5, and I'm going to bring this back down to about 2. 0.5 and that will give more security for this join here to make sure it's nicely joined. Again, I'm just mushing this all together. As best I can. And now I'm going to back it up again, secure it more. And don't worry about what's on the outside, we're going to get that on our next round. All right, so we've done our join. We can continue around with the same angle. Now we're going to continue sewing all that's left that is attached to our bowl here. And we're going to keep going until we get close to the end here. We're getting close to our little end here. Again, I'm going to just see if I can push all these so it's, it's grabbing it onto the inside of the rope here. So all these little ends are tucked in to the middle here as best I can. Now before I use up all of this rope that it's attached, I want to come back in and reinforce that join a little bit more. So I'm just going to stop here. So I just wanted to inspect my joint on both sides and there's a little bit of um, rope coming up. I could probably cut that off or I could reinforce a bit more. So I'm going to reinforce it just slightly more and on this side again I can do a little tiny bit more reinforcing here as well. And instead of cutting coming onto the two ropes that join them I'm going to come right through on top of the rope to make sure all these little ends are tucked in.
And once you're happy with your reinforcement of your join, you can come back in and let's continue sewing right up into the end where it's going to join together. Now I'm going to just sort of have this um, bowl that's resting kind of on my body here, just so I can try to get it up as close as I can to finish up the rest of the attaching here. I don't, I'm trying to do this so I, don't, <laughs> so I don't get my head in the way. So I'm just going to have to like squish this up a little bit here. So we've got them both coming together still. Okay, I'm about an inch away from here to where it joins. And that's a pretty good join. I'm going to go back a few times back and forth because this is the pressure point here. Okay, let's take that off. And we're done. And I'm sorry that my body in this was in the way for showing you that last part, but I was just trying to get up as close as I could so it was an inch away. And then what I was doing was doing lots of back stitching here just because this is the pressure point to make sure that is nice and secure. So that's where we were sewing it along. And now we can just flip it over and we have our lid. And there we have our beautiful finished contoured basket starting narrow at the bottom, getting wider and then coming in narrow again. And then we showed you how to have an attached lid and that just sits beautifully on the top to finish it off. You can use this for so many things for storage or just even as a beautiful accent piece anywhere in your house. So I'm pretty happy how this basket turned out. And as you might have noticed, it's really solid. And that's because I used the Buffalo cotton rope. I really quite like this. If you want a firmer basket, then this is a great choice. And as you can see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's pretty, it's pretty solid. So, we've done the baskets. You know how to make a curved basket now. And we don't have enough time on this video to show you how to do some embellishments on this, but that will be a future video coming up. I'm kind of thinking for this one here, I would love to do uh, ombre blue, having it going dark to lighter, and then maybe dark and then light in the middle here. So keep your notification bell on and you might see that video coming up in the future and also another way to embellish is you can add a bead onto the top for a handle and you can use embroidery thread to create your own special design work or you can do something like this now I will go into more detail into the next video and I'll show you how I created the fringe, how to do embroidery work and how to add some embellishments. So until then, keep watching. Bye bye for now.